Yeah. Looks like it's you're on. All the way over there. Yeah. yeah, you're on. Okay. Oh, you don't see a lot? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good evening. Glad to see uh, you here. And hopefully maybe we might have a few other folks come straggling in. Uh, you know, this is the first time in over a year that we've been here uh, in the middle of the week. Of course, we're usually here on Wednesday night and not instead of Thursday night, but this is Monday, Thursday. So glad to have you here. For those of you who may be popping on on Facebook Live, we're glad that you're here uh, tonight as well and I uh, hope uh, you will enjoy the service. I don't know if we're going to get many people to come back in-house or not. I don't know. It's all electronic now. So, But anyway, well, listen, uh, we're glad to have uh, Brother Wade Brower with us. Wade is new to our congregation, he and Jeanette, and uh, uh, he was sharing uh, with Susan and I earlier this evening about some of his experiences working in the military in Iran, Iraq not Iran, but Iraq. Uh, and uh, so a lot of experiences, a lot of uh, opportunities in, uh, in engineering and what have you. And then, you know, God calls you to, to the ministry. And uh, so we're glad that, uh, you know, that you guys are here and part of our congregation. And uh, so anyway, we were talking about this presentation about the cedar mill. Uh, and uh, I thought, wow, that would be great to share. So uh, he's going to come now and start sharing with us. And then we're going to have communion here at the end. But uh, Wade, come and welcome. And, uh, and thank you for coming and sharing and being a part of this tonight. Okay. Well, thank you, Pastor Darrell. Yeah, just briefly, as, as Pastor Darrell mentioned, I am a retired engineer, a civilian, and uh, this is my second calling. And so at 60 years old, I uh, had a calling from God, and four years later, we're still working on it. Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to talk about the Passover meal, and uh, I'll tell you how this pretty much started, was I was asked to, um, to do the communion. And I got to thinking about it, you know, and it's like, okay, we've done communion all our lives, right? You know, eat the bread, eat, drink the, you know, drink the juice. And I got to thinking, I said, why the bread? What's so special about the bread? I mean, I don't know much about Passover, but, I mean, there's a lamb on the table. Jesus is the lamb of God. Why didn't he pick up the lamb? You know, I, I just couldn't figure it out. So I started researching what the Passover meal was. and. We, we, you know, got to this point where I said, oh, now I get it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you guys about the cedar meal and, and uh, what that in, entails. All right. So, and again, you can kind of read some of this stuff. I'm not going to read the slides. I'll just talk around them. So hopefully you can see those and read them. The uh, little background, all four of the Gospels mention the, the Last Supper, Communion, the Eucharist, which means cup of thanksgiving. And these are all proper to use. There's nothing wrong with them. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are pretty consistent. You know, John is a little different, but most people say, yeah, that's just a because he's approaching the story from a different angle. Okay? So let me quickly read through. I'm going to start with Matthew uh, 26, 20 to 30. But if you want to read more, you're certainly welcome to go in and read Mark and Luke. And I've put the verses there if you want to. So 26, 20 to 30, uh, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. That's important. Okay, He's reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man that betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Jesus, one who betrayed him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. 
Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, another important point, I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of it, from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Okay? Now, so with that background set and hearing what we heard, and we've heard that story most of our lives, right? So now we're going to look a little bit more in the Passover meal and how this relates to Jesus. Now, the first thing is Seder means order. Okay? That's, that's the whole thing. So this is a ritual and ordered time together with family and with celebration. Okay? Uh, the Passover meal is usually kosher, right? And does not contain any food with yeast. Okay? Now, there is specific items that it calls out. Think of the Seder um, much like you would if you said, uh, what's your Christmas traditions or what's your Thanksgiving traditions, right? In other words, if you have a Christmas uh, celebration with, you know, three families, like your aunts and uncles and everybody comes over, you know, you've all got different things, and it's going to be different than if it's just you and your wife or you and your spouse, right? You're not going to have the elaborate thing. And that's kind of the way it is with the Seder meal. There's some certain things that are called out, but you can always change them depending on who is there. Okay, I hope that makes sense. There's a 15-step choreographed combination of taste, sounds, and sensations. And the reason that they're doing this is because they want to bring back the feeling of the original Passover. Okay? Now, this is a Jewish website. And uh, for those of you who are here, and you'll see at the end, I have a disclaimer. You know, the, there's a lot of different stuff out on the web, and I tried to use the most common spellings, the most common things. But um, this is Aish.com, which is a very good Jewish website to get some of the stuff. But basically, it's the Jews embark on a personal journey of slavery to freedom, from when they were in Egypt to when they went to, the, you know, when they got left. And then, so there's 15 steps of freedom that they go through. So the Passover Seder meal is 15 steps. Now, part of this is the Seder plate. Now, this could be a plate that is out in the center of the table by itself, or you could each have your own individual plate, okay? But, and, and here's a picture one. Now, this is a really nice one. Some people, you know, they like to celebrate and have a really nice big um, Seder plate in the middle of the table, and then everybody else eats. The, uh, we're going to go through these real quick, but just kind of give you an idea of what they have on there, and there will go the names. And again, I'm going to go through these really quickly, and that's why, for those here, I handed out those... Um, uh, little handouts, so you can kind of follow along, all right? Uh, the plate is set individually. Zoroa is arm, and it's usually lamb, right? And it's shank bone. The interesting thing here could be a chicken neck or a thigh, and vegetarians could use a roast beet, okay? But it represents the outstretched arm of God and goes from there. Then there's a roasted egg, the betza, okay? And that just symbolizes mourning because of the destruction of the temple, not eaten, okay, but it should look roasted. And as I mentioned, you know, when they talked about Jesus reclining and stuff, there's certain things that the Jews do at Passover Seder meal that actually mock the nobility, okay? And this is one of them. They said, hey, we're not like the Egyptians because they didn't consume eggs, fish, or meat. So it was very important to the Jews to eat eggs, okay? They're not like the pagans. And then there's a bitter herb. Okay, and again, the bitter herb is to recall the bitterness of slavery. The charaset, this is really good stuff. Actually, my wife made me some, and I loved it. It's, it's apples, pears, a little bit of wine, cinnamon, um, and you mix it all together, and it's really enjoyable, good stuff. That it's used as a symbol to represent the mortar that the Hebrew slaves used to make bricks. There's a green vegetable. If you're in Eastern Europe and it's winter and you can't get to a green vegetable, you can use boiled potatoes. Then there's a second bitter herb, okay? And we'll, they'll talk about the Hillel sandwich, all right? Now, so there's a Seder plate. And by the way, this is the Cheriset, okay? And, you know, obviously there's the egg, there's the chicken neck or thigh. But there's other stuff on the table besides the Seder plate, okay? The first thing is the matzah which is plural for matzah. This is bread, right? There's three pieces stacked and covered. 
So I have here, I don't have matzah, but I have bread. And they have three pieces that they stack and they leave on the table. Okay? Very important. All right? Come back to that. Um, oh, just sometimes I put little fun facts in there. You know, this is one of them. You know, the, some one time um, they put, you know, in the, was the sixth century? Yeah. They put, uh, they added another slice of bread. It doesn't matter. During Jesus' time, there was only three pieces of bread. Just some interesting stuff. Now, this is another fun fact. They are very, the Hebrew people, the Jews, are very, very strict in their observance of the matzah. Okay? And they go through a very specific process to make sure that it's pure and it hasn't hit moisture and things like that. All right? So just another fun fact you can read. Hopefully you can read that. Um, from that website, the matzah is flat, but it has many faces. Okay, you can see bread of affliction, bread of poverty, bread of proclamation, which we tell the story of Exodus, right? Bread of humility, okay? Bread of faith. So the bread of healing, so it represents the bread, represents a lot of stuff, okay? A lot of things that the bread represents that they use to celebrate, okay? Now, the other thing that's really important is they have four cups of wine. Now, it can be one cup that you fill, you know, it doesn't have to be four separate cups. And, you know, you don't have to down the whole thing, right? You can just take a sip if you want. But this is a time of celebration, so, you know, there, it's not a bad thing if you drink all four cups. But the four cups represent the four biblical promises of redemption. The cup of sanctification, I will bring you out from the burden of Egypt. Cup of the plagues, I will rid you of slavery. Cup of redemption, I will redeem you. Cup of completion, I will take you to me as a people. Again, these are very important in our discussion. There'll be salt water on the table, right? We're talking about what's on the Passover table. That re represents the tears of the Hebrew people, okay? And, you know, again, the tradition is to start the meal by dipping the egg into the salt water. And then the actual Pesach meal, anything that's kosher and unleavened. Now, there's also two candles that they like. This is not the menorah, okay? These are just two single candles that they light to get everything started. That's also not part of the 15 steps. Just a typical 15-step Seder, Passover is a seven-day celebration, and because there's Jews all over the world, someday if you're outside of Israel, you're actually allowed to go eight days, and it's typically 8 to 16 April, which is, if you read the Jewish calendar, it's the 15th of Nisan, okay? the night. This is cool. The night before the Seder, the whole house is cleaned of any shamets, yeast, leavened grain, right? Cookies, cakes, breads, etc. House is then searched by the whole family by candlelight, right? And any stuff that's any that they find is either burned or sold to non-Jews. And then for that entire week, no shamets is allowed into the house nor consumed. Another fun fact: it must be sold through a qualified rabbi. And if you do keep it in the house, you have to. Keep it in a, a locker and lock it and taped shut. Interesting. And then, of course, the lighting and the blessing of the two candles to get it started. All right, so now we're going to go through these 15 steps very quickly. Okay? So you're sitting at the table, and now it's time to start. You've lit the candles, you've prayed. Now, someone fills your cup with wine, you fill someone else's cup with wine. This is, remember we had the four cups. This is the cup of sanctification. I will bring you out from the burden of Egypt. Then you stand and say the Kaddush, right? And that can be used a lot of different ways, you know? But basically, it's reciting the verses from the Torah, from Genesis, about the first Shabbat, Sabbath, where God took rest, the blessing over the wine, and we thank God for having chosen the Jews as the nation and given us the gift of Sabbath, Shabbat. Then you drink the cup. You relax on your left side. Now, remember where we read? Jesus was reclining, right? This is why he was reclining. Reclining, as well as many other actions in Seder, are meant as a mockery of nobility, right? When they were slaves, the Egyptians would lay on their side and eat, and the slaves would stand behind them and serve them, right? So that's why they eat this reclining. Okay, next is Urshatz. This is where you wash your hands. Pretty simple. You take the thing, you go twice over your right hand. You take it, you go twice over your left hand. You dry it off. You say a blessing. Okay? And again, depending on where you're at and, and the, the, um, 
the group you're with. You could have a big fancy bowl or you could just do it with water. Right? Kind of up to you. But this is the interesting part about that, that typically they only wash their hands before eating bread. Right? But now they're going to get ready to wash their hands before they eat a vegetable. Okay? So now is the carpus, the appetizer. You dip the green vegetable that you have on your plate into the salt water. And again, this is another mockery, right? The Romans especially would use all kinds of fancy dips and stuff, right? So here they would just dip the vegetable into the salt water. And then you say a blessing for a vegetable, and then you eat the vegetable. And this is not a bad time to chow down a little bit because we're gonna, they're going to go through a lot of steps before they get to the actual meal, okay? Yeah, it's hard to get these names. Yashets. Okay, break the middle matzah. Another important part. I told you they had three pieces of bread. Okay? Three pieces of bread. The, the host of the Seder takes out the middle piece. Right? He takes it and he breaks it. Okay? The smaller portion he puts back between the other two pieces. The bigger portion, he takes and breaks. Let's see if I can do it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, breaks into five pieces. And then they take that and they hide it. Okay. No, let me. Okay. Now, you can, you can hide this. And this is part of the thing if you have kids. Sometimes you can make a game of it where you hide it and they go find it and stuff like that. But, um, I'm sorry, let's break the button. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, yeah, just the, the fun fact there was a shepherdic Jews actually put it under the kids' arms because that's how they had to leave Egypt. They had to leave in a hurry. So this is hidden away, right? Don't know where it's at, okay? And this is also a reference to the coming Messiah. Okay. Then we tell the story, the Magid. Okay, you drink the second cup of wine, or I'm sorry, you fill it. Okay, the cup of slavery. I will rid you of slavery. And then usually you get the children or the youngest adults, one of the younger youngest adults, to ask the four questions, which are really only one question, which is why is this night different from all the others? And you can read. And all the other nights we eat bread or matzah. Why do we only eat matzah? Okay, all the other nights we eat all kinds of vegetables and herbs, but this night we have to eat bitter herbs. On all the other nights we don't dip our vegetables in salt water, but this night we dip them twice. All the other nights we eat while sitting upright, but this night we eat reclining. There was another uh, question about roasted meat, but that was removed um, after the temple was destroyed. So they come up, and, and this gives the adults a chance to tell the kids the story. Okay, and then another interesting thing is each time the ten plagues are read, a, read aloud, you're supposed to dip your pinky into the cup of wine and drop it on your seda plate. Okay. Then finally you drink the second cup of wine. Okay. Now we're already at step five. Step six: wash your hands again. Right. Twice. Twice. Dry your hands. Do the, do the, um, say the blessing. Now, I will tell you this personally. I was trying to figure out where exactly in the meal did I feel that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Okay? I looked all over, couldn't find exactly where it was. Okay? I mean, I just looked. Maybe, maybe someone smarter than I am can, can tell me, but I couldn't find it that any reliable source. And it really doesn't matter because the whole point of that washing the feet is a beautiful message. It's not about when it was done. Okay, but I just, you know, wanted to see where that would fall in the Seder meal. And uh, it could have been done right at the beginning, could have been done at one of these stations, don't know. But again, it's just a beautiful message. Then we say the blessing. So we just washed our hands and now we say the matzi, the blessing over the bread. You grab all three of the matzahs, okay, you say the blessing, and then you take the bottom one and put it down, and then take the top one and you break it and you hand it out to everyone. Okay? Then you would eat the matzah. Okay? 
now the, the maror is step nine, which is the bitter herbs. Because the Israelites were slaves, they ate the bitter herbs to remind them of the servitude. And a lot of times, usually horseradish, sometimes you could take some of the romaine and dip it into the cherisette. That's that apple, pear, wine, cinnamon stuff. You know, but then you're supposed to shake it off. Um, and, uh, the, but so you eat the bitter herb, and then you make this Hillel sandwich, which is the Korish. And what you do is you take a couple of pieces of matzah, so you'd have some matzah, and you'd take a couple of pieces and you'd put the, the um, uh, cherisette in there and the, the mar, and then you'd just make a sandwich out of it. And again, that, the mortar, the cherisette, remember, represents the mortar, and so that symbolizes we want to bond the Jewish people together. Huh? Then finally, it's time for dinner. Now, dinner can be anything that's kosher and, you know, again, unleavened bread, matzo ball soup, briskets, matzo lasagna. You know, you can have dessert too, right? This is so you have the dinner. Okay. Now we get to the interesting part, I think. Eating the afikamen. Remember I told you about the, the bread, the matzo that he took and hid, okay? This... Um, is called the afikamen, which means like after meal. Okay, think of it as dessert. Now they've already had dessert, but this is the way they did it. Okay, so it was hidden, all right. And then if there were kids there, they would go run around and see if they could find it and bring it out. And then if they if they did, you know, they could make a big deal. You could barter with the kids, you know, give them out toys and prizes, things like that. But it kind of kept them uh, interested in the whole thing. So. They brought out the afikamen and handed it out to everybody. Okay? Now, this is the point where Jesus brought out the hidden afikamen and he said, this is my body broken for you. Okay? When you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So after, basically after the meal, they had to eat the afikamen, right? Then they have the blessing after the meal. The third cup of wine, the cup of redemption, is poured for everyone. The blessing is recited, and participants drink their glasses while reclining, and any special guest will drink from the host's cup. Now, if you remember, Jesus passed the cup around to everybody, so they were all special. And this is a point where Jesus told the disciples that the, this cup, the cup of redemption, is his blood and establishes the new convention. Note that he says, I will not drink of this vine, fruit of the vine, until God's kingdom is established. Why is that important? Okay. Well, let me just get Matthew 26, 28 and 29. Oh, I had it. Um, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Okay, then just going on, a cup of wine is poured from, for Elijah, and nobody touches that. It just stays there. And then usually you send a, ch a child or someone to check and see if, they, um, uh, if Elijah's at the door. Okay. Then they do a song of praise, a hymn, usually from Psalms 119. And then the fourth and final cup, the cup of completion, I will take you to me as a people of wine is consumed. Right? Why is this important? What's missing? Okay. If you notice, let me go back. After they ate the afikamen, this is when Jesus said, okay, this is my bread, uh, this is my body, broken for you. Then they drink the third cup, right? And if you read, and I think this is, let me get over to Mark. Okay, so Mark 25 says, Truly I tell you, well, 24, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went to the Mount of Olives. Okay? So they drank the third cup, the cup of redemption. And then they sang a hymn. They didn't drink the cup of completion. Right? Also, there's another thing. Let me go back. 
So after, after he said the blessing, and that's when they had the wine, and he said, this is my, the blood of my covenant, right? Then the final, after the hymn, is they, they say the nertza, which is the acceptance, okay? And what they say is, next year in Jerusalem, and what this means is the Messiah is coming, okay? They didn't say that either, right? The Bible says they went from the hymn, they went from the third cup of wine, the cup of redemption, to the hymn, and then they went to the Mount of Olives. They did not drink the cup of completion, because he said, and this is why it makes sense now. Okay, when he drank that and said, I won't drink the fruit of the vine, until what he's saying is, we're not going to drink the cup of completion. We're going to drink that as a group when we get to heaven, when I come back. That's when we'll do the cup of completion. And he didn't need to say next year in Jerusalem because the Messiah is here. So he skipped those steps intentionally. Okay. Now, does that help clear? I went through this kind of fast because I wanted to make sure that you were going, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're still early. That's good. That's good. The, the, uh, the thing that I want to uh, key on, just, just, oops, wrong way. What I want to key on is the point where Jesus takes the wine, the cup of redemption, this is that point. This is where the new covenant, where, the, where the, the Old Testament is done. And the New Testament starts right there. That's the moment. He says, this is the new covenant that I set with you. That's awesome. To me, that just gives me the willies. But I, you know, that's important. Um, okay, so... I went through that very quickly. Does anyone have any questions? Any thoughts you want on that? Did I go that through that too fast for you? Okay, it's okay. But so you see the. Let me just kind of wrap up. You see the importance of the bread and why he used the bread, because the bread symbolized the bread of affliction, the bread of poverty, the bread of humility, all those things we talked about. The bread, when he did the when when the Hebrew people take the matzah. And they take that center, think of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, right? The Son. And they break it and hide it, the hidden Messiah, right? And then Jesus came back and took that afikaman and said, this is my body. This is me. I'm the Messiah. That's why that's important, okay? All right. So I know I went through that kind of quick, but I wanted to make sure we were going for it. At this point, if there are no questions or no discussions, which I'm fine with, what we can do is we're going to go actually now and do step 12, which is participate in a tzapun. Okay? We're going to eat. In other words, we're going to do communion or the Lord's Supper, one of those things. But now we know from what we talked about, this was step 12 in the 15-step Passover Seder meal. And we know why he did it. So we're actually going to take now the afikaman, the end of dessert, at the end of meal, and we're going to break that, and we're going to acknowledge that this bread represents Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and pass out. Those of you at home, if you have uh, the communion elements, I probably should have mentioned that a little earlier. Um, I didn't have gloves. <laughs> I w normally, I would like to give you guys some of this bread, but I didn't have gloves, so we'll just use the, the regular stuff. And give us a second to pass that out. And uh, at the end of this, I've got the next slide. I've got um, my email address. And I've also got, you know, you guys have it here for those who want on YouTube uh, or Facebook. Um, if you want to have the sites that I hit, the websites that I got, and also my emails on there. So if you have questions or have comments, feel free. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Daryl missed his wife. <laughs> okay, so the, the cool thing now is we've kind of seen how the Jewish people experienced that, that move from slavery to freedom. And then we've seen how Jesus used that Passover meal to show and to the Hebrew people and to us 
why it's important. So, Jesus took the ephicamen and he broke it and he said a blessing. There we go. Sorry, I couldn't get it open. There we go. So, let's, let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this time together, Lord. And we just uh, are honored to share in the supper with your son, the cup of thanksgiving, the, the time that, that he came and showed himself, revealed himself to man. And we just thank you for this blessing and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Let's eat the bread. Let's eat the ephicamen. And likewise, then in Mark, he said, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with drink it new in the kingdom of God. And again, now we know that this is the cup of redemption, right? This is not the cup of completion. So let's go ahead and drink the cup of redemption. So now we participated in the barach. Okay. Now, if you guys don't mind, they sang a hymn. Now, we don't have Psalm 118 to 122. I, at least I don't know how they go. But I know how the doxology goes. So if you guys would just sing that with me. Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. My favorite part. Amen. Close. <laughs> okay. So, again, thank you for this. Um, if you have any specific questions, it's a real easy email, wadenarak at gmail.com. Uh, I had that when I went over there, and I just kept it because all my friends had it, and I'd emailed them and stuff. So if you uh, have any comments, questions, be happy to answer those or at least talk to you. I may not have an answer. Um, now, here's the disclaimer I talked about real quick. Spellings over several websites, books, they're all different, and that's because you find these you know, Hebrew doesn't translate directly. You know, there's some, um, I know in Iraq, in Arabi, there's a, um, there's a, you know, like the, the word Al-Qaeda is not like we say it. It's not with a Q. It's like, hard to do. So a lot of things don't directly uh, connect. Uh, also, I try to not just take one source for any of the um, particulars. You know, I went through several websites just to make sure, and I tried to use a little bit of a standard, again, you know, as best I could. I also went uh, the 2011 NIV Application Study Bible, and then those are the um, websites. So if you said, Wade, this is totally wrong, I disagree, well, go argue with those guys. And uh, again, you have my email there. And then finally, this is what I handed out to those people here. Here's the, the different steps just for your, you know, again, so you wouldn't get lost and just to have them. So, um, Pastor Darrell, I am finished. If you would. Let's give Wade a hand, can we? <laughs> well, brother, thank you for coming and, and sharing that. And uh, yeah, you, whew, you were you were smoking. I mean, you were going so fast, you uh, you were you were sm moving right along. But uh, that was good. Uh, probably be better if we gave you uh, uh, two or three sessions to be able to really dig down into the meat of it. But uh, that's that's interesting. Well, I learned something tonight, Dee. Did you learn anything? I, I learned some new things tonight, especially about the uh, only the 12 steps and
and and uh, you know all the other stuff and about the middle piece of bread and representing Christ and and him, you know he's saying this is me I'm the Messiah and I, my body is broken for you wow that's that's very very interesting so thank you so very much we had we had some online watching too and there'll be some that'll be watching this over you know the next uh, few days as well. Well, we're glad you came out. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am excited about Sunday. It's going to be really, I believe, really, really special and really, really good. I'm excited about the message God has given me, and there's going to be something really special at the end that will bring it all together, and uh, you might actually see me have a shout and running spell. <laughs> Because I get I get to thinking about it, and boy, the spirit just whew, I get the cold chills, man. And uh, I, I was awake at three o'clock this morning, thinking about the service Sunday morning, and thinking about uh, you know wh- how this is all going to hopefully come out and come you know come together, whatever. But uh, looking forward to it. So we hope that uh, you will be with us one way or the other. We hope that you'll either join us in person, or you'll join us on Facebook Live or on YouTube streaming. Or you can also come and you will have the uh, radio signal going in the parking lot as well. Well, anyway, new day. We're going to try to climb, crawl out of COVID here, pandemic, and get back into kind of some uh, what of a normal routine. Uh, and uh, so it may take us a while to get everybody motivated back up and running again and uh, what have you. But let's, uh, let's close with prayer tonight, okay? Our fathers, we come to you tonight. We thank you, Lord, uh, for this Monday, Thursday. And Lord, we know that some 2,000 years or so ago on this night, Lord, uh, some very important things took place. And Lord, as uh, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, and Lord, uh, some of it was typical, usual, but Father, there was some new twist and some new turns in it because, Lord, a new day was about to dawn. A new covenant was about to uh, come forth. And, uh, Father, uh, some very important things for the redemption of humanity and for the future of humanity was about to take place. And so, Lord, uh, we pray, God, that we will be thinking about not only what had took place on Monday, Thursday, tomorrow's Good Friday. And then, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to focus on and think about, Father, uh, you and the cross and the resurrection, all those things, Father, leading up to Easter Sunday. So, Lord, uh, it's a special time because, Father, without the cross, without the resurrection, there would be no salvation. And so, Lord, we're thankful, God, today that you sent your Son And the Lord Jesus, we're thankful that you were willing to stay the course and that you were willing to go to the cross and suffer the pain and everything that you went through. And then you rose again on the third day with victory over death, hell, and the grave. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, just be with us as we go for the rest of the week. Watch over us, care for us, and be with us, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. Good night. And God bless.